Hey everyone, Rankle here to give you some insight on the new bounty system and the rewards in the Reaper of Souls expansion and some little tips to help you out. Everybody knows bounties are quick objectives in every act. There are a total of five in each act and they are randomized each game you start. The list of bounties for each area is still limited, but you could see a decent variation. Once you complete your first bounty in the act, you're given an XP bonus. Every bounty reward beyond that will be giving you Rift Keystone Fragments. When you complete all five bounties, you're rewarded more experience and Herodric Cash. That everybody knows. But here I'm going to tell you a few tricks about your bounty bags you might not have known. First, you can farm them on a difficulty less than Expert, and if you do open up on Expert difficulty and above, you can still get a chance for Imperial Gems to drop. In the beta, these used to be the same issue where you actually got the Torment 6 bonus to find legendaries to increase the chance at finding items. Apparently Blizzard said they fixed that, but it seems they still overlook the fact that you can roll gems in a higher difficulty that you shouldn't be getting when you're farming the bags in a lower difficulty. However, I figure I might as well cross my fingers and open up on any lower difficulty bags on Torment 6 for the sake of doing it because at least the Imperial Gems will still pop out and who knows, maybe the legendary find actually wasn't fixed and it still applies. Second, you can farm bags on one class, where my Witch Doctor here is an example, and put it in your stash. Then you can go open it up on another class, and the items will roll stats or the items that will be class specific relative to that class here shown on my Demon Hunter. From what I've found, the level requirement for the items is determined when the bag is dropped. If Blizzard fixed the legendary find being affected by the difficulty settings, it should have already determined if you got a legendary or not, so really opening it on different difficulties shouldn't matter. However, it still looks like it creates and rolls the affixes when your specific class opens it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be seeing this one-handed crossbow on my demon armor from a bag farmed by my witch doctor. What also isn't known by many is that there are specific legendary item rewards unique to each act that you can only get from Roderick Crash Rewards. There is a list on Diablo Hub right now, but it is still only a partial list, and it's missing several rewards. Also, it doesn't tell you what act to find each reward from. At BlizzCon, in the Adventure Mode demo and in the Friends and Family beta, there was a menu you could pull up showing which rewards were available from each act. In later beta builds, they removed this menu for some reason. It was confirmed in a developer playthrough interview a few weeks back that they did in fact remove it, and they had no plans of putting it back in. I'd originally put a post on Reddit that showed the pictures of all these rewards from the bounties. However, some of these item affixes that were originally listed on the BlizzCon demo floor have definitely changed. Items like Pride's Fall Helm now decrease your resource cost if you have not taken damage instead of boosting your highest primary stat by 10% and decreasing all others by 5%. Same with Boots of Disregard. Instead of dealing 20% more damage after remaining stationary for 3 seconds, it now gives you more life per second as you stand still. There are a few others that have changed around, so look for the Diablo Hub listings for an accurate up-to-date item description as the items have not been added to the official Diablo3.com item database. Also, some of these screenshots that I'm going to be showing you of items are beta screenshots of items, so the stats might be really high compared to what you'll actually be seeing. So the following act-specific items, I'll just detail the legendary affix. There are some predetermined affix rolls, but for the most part you want these items for the legendary affix alone, and you can always reroll a bad stat at the Mystic. Act 1 has Mad Monarch Scepter. It's a one-handed mace, and after killing 10 enemies, you release a Poison Nova that deals 1,050 to 1,400% weapon damage as poison to enemies within 30 yards. The 1,050 to 1,400%, that's actual range, and that'll vary based off of the weapons that you have. Next, Royal Ring of Grandeur. Reduces the number of items needed for a set bonus by 1 to a minimum of 2. That means if you have one item and you put this on, it's not going to give you the set bonuses of 2. You need 2 as a minimum. Pauldrons of the Skeleton King. When receiving fatal damage, there is a chance that you are instead restored to 25% of maximum life and cause nearby enemies to flee in fear. The Golden Gorget of Leoric. After earning a Massacre bonus, 4-6 to six skeletons are summoned to fight by your side for 10 seconds. Sanguinary Vambraces. Chance on being hit to deal 1000% of your thorns damage to nearby enemies. For Act 2 rewards, we have Cloak of Deception. This is Demon Hunter Cloak that enemy missiles sometimes pass through you harmlessly. Illusionary Boots. You may move unhindered through enemies. This means you have no clipping through enemies. Gloves of Worship. Shrine effects last for 10 minutes. Now this doesn't apply to pylons in rifts. It is only for the original shrines. Coven's Criterion. You take 50 to 60% less damage from blocked attacks. In Act 3, we have the Burst of Wrath two-handed axe. Killing enemies and destroying objects has a chance to grant 20% of your maximum primary resource. Boots of Disregard gain 500% life regeneration per second each second you stand still, and this effect stacks up to 8 times. Pride's Fall Helm, your resource costs are reduced by 30% after not taking damage for 5 seconds. Envious Blade Dagger gain 100% critical hit chance against enemies at full health. Insatiable Belt, picking up a health globe increases your maximum life by 5% for 15 seconds, stacking up to 5 times. 
Overwhelming Desire. Chance on hit to charm an enemy. While charmed, the enemy takes 35% more damage. Now, one thing I found out was for an Act 4, you actually get every single bounty reward as possible from an Act 4 bounty bag. Finally, in Act 5, Death's Bargain's Pants. Gain an aura of death that deals 1,000% of your life per second to enemies within 20 yards. You no longer regenerate life. Soul Smasher, when you kill an enemy, it explodes for 500% of your life per kill as damage to all enemies within 20 yards. You no longer benefit from your life per kill. Hell Trapper, it has a 7-10% to 10 chance on hit to summon a Spike Trap, Caltrops, or a Sentry. Salvation Shield, blocked attacks heal you and your allies for the amount blocked. And finally, Pandemonium Loop, enemies slain while feared die in a bloody explosion and cause other nearby enemies to flee in fear. And that's it! Now, this is the only way that you can get these items. Also, as of now, you won't see any other legendary items from Roderick Cash Bags. So if you're looking for these specific items, farming the bags in mass quantity on normal is going to be far greater than doing them on higher difficulty. Just remember to open it up in Torment 6 because the legendary find bonus might not have been fixed from the beta, but at least you'll still be getting a chance at Imperial Gems. I hope this has helped you guys understand the bounty reward system and how to maximize your chances at the legendary items and get more Imperial Gems for your efforts. As always, if you have any questions, ask them in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe for more Reaper of Souls videos. If you want to come watch, I am live streaming at twitch.tv slash Hope to see you there, and thanks for watching.